All right, uh, so we are ready to go, I guess. Yeah. So, welcome. <laughs> welcome to this new perspective. Uh, this is New Perspectives program, and today we have a beautiful topic. Uh, we will speak on the transformation of our body and especially consciousness and on influence of poetic word and music on our consciousness and life. And especially about mutual interdependence between poetic words and music, which is very complex. Um, because the music is based on rhythmic properties and uh, the poetry and poetic meter on one hand, and then there are choices of different instruments to choose with their different properties. So there are melodies, harmonies, and all this determines this poetic perception or the, the deeper perception which we may have from poetry and music. We shall discuss how Sri Aurobindo's poetry inspires musicians to compose music with Shakti Balu, an Aurovillian and composer and singer, and Dr. Don Salman, who is a pianist and psychologist. And both Shakti and Don are musicians and lifetime students of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. So without further ado, I shall request <coughs> Shakti to address the audience and to tell us her story and vision of music and poetry. Please, Shakti. Thank you, Vladimir, and good evening, everyone. I'm Shakti Balu. I live in Oroville for 28 years already. And I suppose all of us, we are here, those who seek perfection. And we look for the divine alone in our life. The ways we are doing it, everybody has its own way. And what I learned from the mother that my life path is determined by my innermost being, which wants to grow and wants to come forward to guide all the rest of me to the light and new realizations. And it uses a scenario which suits the most to its purpose. So we are submitted to the task by birth and our psychic chooses our life circumstances. First is our birth, stars uh, at the moment of our birth and in particular constellation, then the family, country chosen for us by our souls as the best for our growth. Then we develop particular qualities, virtues, problems, getting some traumas, so on and so forth. I think if we manage to feel the divine, it is most luckily happening in young age, when the human being is still innocent and still connects to his, her soul. And we remember those moments all our lives because they are not ordinary moments. For example, I'm coming from a very musical family. We're singing together in harmonies with the highest joy ever. And for me, being a child and participating to the joy was an experience of love, beauty, goodness, and the deepest feeling of belonging to my beloved Ukraine. That experience was very innermost. So my being was shaped by those frequencies. Music for me associates with love, beauty, and goodness. When I was seven years old, I went to the shop of musical instruments after school to choose the piano I wanted to have. I asked the saleswoman to keep it for me. I found the nice black piano I loved. Then I informed my mom that lady keeps piano for me and she should go and buy it. My, my, my mom was laughing, but in the end of the month, she got a loan and bought the piano for me. I was thrilled. I would say that I'm not gifted particularly with a beautiful voice or extra talent for the piano playing. Nevertheless, all the teachers were saying that I am. I'm quite ordinary in that case. But uh, what I was always looking for, it is that amazing light which was coming along, that promise behind the 
piece of music or movement which was very touched, uh, touched me within. It was happening when I was touched by some particular piece of music, as I say, or produce the voice, my voice sounds so very beautifully, or I would play it on the piano and then that was coming. And I discovered that as inspiration comes from somewhere else within me. It uplifts from within, it, it's like falling in love for the first time. It is literally giving you feeling like wings are growing behind your back, between your shoulder blades. At one point, you don't have enough air to breathe. Your heart is beating faster and you have an emergency to write that word on notes, express that I would say white and luminous, something very real, which fills you from within and growing big. And you feel like your mind and heart is going to explode if you will not express it. But I discovered that one has to stay calm in order to not lose the flow. I would say I'm grateful that I got this kind of being which is able to transmit some particular vibrations which visit me time to time. I'm very grateful to be this way, being able to transform those frequencies into flow of music or poetry, painting. It comes when I open the door and wait. I call in the intention the door. But before opening that door, I know that that which has to come is somewhere near. I don't know how to express this, but it is a particular state of the being when you know it's something going to happen to you and you're ready. You're very receptive. Also, before opening the door, yeah, I, I'm very, I'm very uh, alert, I would say. I say in alertness. Sometimes it comes, this wave, it comes in the night and doesn't let me sleep. Then I come down, I write, and then I would say in my chest, the warm gold is settled. I have this sensation in there. I speak maybe a little more in symbols because it is quite difficult to explain the processes otherwise. So I would come to the, to the point how I started to compose music to the poems of Sri Aurobindo. I was studying in Sri Aurobindo works in Sakara, at, um, in, in Pondicherry with an Andredi. And I would say it was the best years of my life with Sri Aurobindo. I was very close to his word. And at one point we had an assignment on future poetry. And I start reading. And then um, it filled me from within. I heard anthem of glory to the divine in my heart. So I was in I was rejoicing because it was it was so much, it was so deep, it was a lot for me. So I put the poetry book on the piano and my fingers started to play. Rhythms appeared, melodies, one after another, and I composed and composed, and it was strange music. It was far from being song or whatever I knew as a musical piece, but I kept doing it. Then I got stuck, and for many years, and for many reasons, I suppose I had to grow in many different ways. First, to become more receptive, as all of us, we need to be. Then to raise my musical skills, which happens very well by being a piano teacher. <clears throat> being a teacher gives you advantage of listening to the learning process every day. You begin from the beginning. And music, psychology, in yoga. And it is quite a tough way and musicians could understand. I was involved in Orville to create a lot of musical events, was playing in many different bands and work with many different singers, which is, by the way, a very good training. 
And at one point, I got ready to continue my work, uh, being initiated by people who knew that I, in the past, what I was doing. So I restart my work. And it started to flow. Music, for example, for poems, evolution and life came on the day of 21st of September on 21. Evolution came as a cappella for five voices and life was only a viola line. I love viola voice. For some reason I heard it as a viola voice, not violin even. So I was very much surprised when I look, when I printed the, the text of the poems for the musician, for the singers to sing. I was so surprised when I look at the date of those poems when Shurubindo wrote them, 21st of September, but in 1910, both of them at the same day. And then I calculated the difference of the years, 111 years passed by. And I found it so beautiful. I feel guided, I feel being part of it. I feel taken care of, I feel loved. An enormous gratitude I feel to the divine in me, in the world, in the universe. And I decided to do recordings of those poems and music which came to it. So some people, singers came along and they started to work and we would like to perform in Oroville in August on 12th and 13th in Kripa. We had a big break because of COVID and other circumstances. So beginning of June, we already restarted the work again. So I would like to say a few more things. And when I reach Rubindo's poem, it brings to me uh, in the real space in me, actually, it's, it's um, resonate within, like I know what he mean. It's very, very close to me. And then something inside when it comes, when the word is coming, penetrating in the heart, I feel demand uh, from inside to react, to be expressed. So when I started to connect with Shirobindo's poetry, um, when the chamber within me begins to open and I feel that demand, I often had the pottery, I mean, I had tears, I was emotionally very touched and I let it go. But after I noticed when um, those tears, I let them go and I become emotional and I react, the chamber is closing. So I felt then, Probably I enjoy so much emotionally, but I didn't let it come deeper in me. So I start to control my emotional uh, reaction. And um, I discover that the chamber within me where the word penetrated, start to expand. I just let that emotion pacify and the chamber expands and till, till the moment it becomes silent. And I felt silence. And in that silence, all the music was inside. So at that moment, my prayer was to Shri Rabindo only to establish that silence in me because I was so uh, full and Purnam in Sanskrit. Um, so that was very strong experience when I was uh, working with the poetry of Shri Rabindo. Sometimes it happened and when I just start to read the poem, of course, intent already was there and I was, I was expecting, I was, I was calling, yeah? And when I start to read the poem, the flow begins immediately. Like for example, in the poem, Divine Hearing, only the title brings me to that space. And poem begins like that, all sounds, all voices have become thy voice. And immediately in my perception, I don't know, inner perception, I hear enormous sound noise of universe, of the sun, of the stars, the symphonies of all, starting from the sound of stars and coming down to the noise of cricket in the grass and the rhythms, billiards of patterns which cover one another. So in this piece, 
rhythm came first. With the, I call them universal intervals, fifth and fourth. And they were mo moving in chromatic movement. And I hear people talking on the phones, in the markets, cars, animals, all create the sound. And out of this all sounds, the word is coming out. And word of Shurubinda, which collected his word, all the sound, he just directs straight as an action, you know, like it goes straight, life word, and goes, penetrates to our heart. Carries, carries that knowledge about that, which settles and demands you to react and you want to, you want to become that. So beautiful feeling, beautiful experience, I would say. After that rhythmic moment in this piece, the second verse with the words, the laughter of the sea is enormous mirth the winged play pouring through the conquered air and the flow of arpeggios, harmonies in half diminished chords came in seeking to resolve the tension. The rhythms are changed in the strange return tongue in fourth with the chords. And then it went back a tempo to the first moment. I analyze just for this presentation what happened. Usually I'm not doing it. I'm taking it as a gift when it comes to me. But as I'm doing presentation, I went back, I checked myself what happened to me. And it is quite an interesting work to do. So I would say uh, I discover the pattern, what happens to me. First, I have the intent opening, then the reaction to the word. Sensitivity, emotional, mental is touched. Then concentration, shift from sensitivity with acceptance of it, expanding of that space in me. Then growing silence, body, heart, mind, idea, music. So I would say this kind of probably pattern, maybe it's not working all the time the same way, but that's what I noticed probably, it's okay. I would like to share today a recorded piece, Silence is All. The poem Silence is All, which we listen today, is literally won my heart. And I would like to ask Vladimir, please, can you can you show the text? I I don't I don't see it. It's very funny. Okay, we oh all right, yes. If you notice how it's written the poem. So it starts from the very small um, uh, verse, which is first, silence is all, say the sages, silence watches the work of the ages. In the book of silence, the cosmic scribe has written his cosmic pages. Silence is all, say the sages. Then he's asking, what then of the word of speaker what then of the thought of singer? Thought is the wine of the soul, and the word is a beaker. Life is a banquet table, the soul of the sage is a drinker. What of the wine, O oh mortal? I am drunk with the wine as I sit at wisdom's portal, waiting for the light beyond thought and the word in Long I sit in vain at the wisdom spot. And the last verse, which is big. How shall thou know the word when it comes, a seeker? How shall thou know the light when it breaks a witness? I shall hear the voice of the God within me and grow wiser and weaker. I shall be the tree that takes in the light 
as its food. I shall drink its nectar of sweetness. Please, let's listen to this music which came to this beautiful poem. And yeah, let's listen to it, Vladimir Kenput. is all say the sages thank you vladimir ah oh, anytime i listen to it i am so taken i don't know it's a magic so sri robin the word has a magic it's an action. When it comes down to us, to earth, when we receive it, we are changing. And my interest in all of this work was even, I don't know, I don't know if I have, I think I'm too egoistic because I wanted, 
I wanted it. I wanted a lot of it. I wanted first for me and someone within me is really rejoicing and enjoying hearing it. And we are very lucky that we can hear the word of Sri Aurobindo. We are under the wing of the mother here and we are given everything just to do the work what they wanted us to do. I did another piece which is also available here as a video it's called it's on transformation path and it was written in uh, composed in the minor key and what it came to me it's a wave of uh, ascending movements to the top and every time repetitive it ascend it's ascend it's like chiseling out of of, of the stone some some perfect statue I would say. So in the end, when it's done, it turns to the major chord. And this piece is not uh, is not sung. Uh, it's recited by Malcolm, very good man. And uh, please look at it. Transformation. My breath runs in a subtle rhythmic stream. It fills my members with a might divine. I have drunk the infinite like a giant's wine. Time is my drama or my pageant dream. Now are my illumined cells joy's flaming scheme and changed my thrilled and branching nerves to fine channels of rapture, opal and hyaline for the influx of the unknown and the supreme. I am no more a vassal of the flesh, a slave to nature and her leaden rule. I am caught no more in the senses' narrow mesh. My soul unhorizoned widens to measureless sight. My body is God's happy living tool. My spirit is a vast sun of deathless light. Thank you. So that was another work which was taking me quite deep within me and well, chiseling out of me something <laughs> maybe better what I am, <laughs> I hope. So I have uh, one more piece to present to you. I think we are good in time, right? A little. Uh, so I compose one more piece, but my poetry and my music with um, it's a will prayer for Ukraine. Everybody knows that Ukraine is at war now, and I composed it in 2014 when the war just began. I was my body was painting, and um, I belong to that country, my beloved mother, Ukraine. So I compose willpower. And if Vladimir will, will show it to us, if I have time, I, I can say something about it. Зійшла над Україною Зоря, зоря волі і свободи Запалала Божечку, 
бережи її рідну матінку, матінку, ложечку, дай нам і русі, дай нам заводи. Радо 
трошечку бережи її рідну матінку. Thank you so much for you, looking sir, yeah, for my work and Don is going to present beautiful work also. I just wanted to say this piece was uh, done by six people of six different nationalities, German, Dutch, French, Croatian, Tamil, and Ukrainian. So this is the beauty of Oroville. We have to keep it this way with love and tenderness under the wing of the mother. Thank you so much for listening to Thank my you. presentation. Thank you. Very beautiful. Now we come to Dawn. Dawn, please uh, uh, take your time. Yes, uh, so we will be a little bit over time, but that's okay. So please go ahead. Well, how can I follow that? Shanti, that was absolutely amazing. I was just smiling as you're describing growing up in Ukraine. I grew up in a small, New Jersey suburb about 10 miles west of New York City in the uh, 50s and 60s with, you know, TV and rock and roll and, and comic books and sports and a different life. I was telling Shakti and um, Vladimir yesterday that I lived most of my life in New York City in the place in an area with the second largest Ukrainian uh, population in the world, the first the first immigrant population is Toronto, but we had uh, Ukrainian Italian restaurants and everything, but it was it was quite extraordinary. And just before I start, I want to say one thing. I was telling Jan last day, just wrapped me with tears of gratitude. Shakti just talked about the international township of Oroville, which is truly astonishing and an embodiment of Mother and Shirvino's grace. I have to say and feel like it is such an extraordinary honor to be part of this um, endeavor with the Gras. I want to thank especially Vladimir and Rade and HP. I was saying to Jan, you know, in the integral yoga world, which I've been part of for 45 years, there's nothing like this. I mean, it's really this bringing together. I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's a deep, deeply entwined with Oroville, but there's something very special and unique about this project. It's so wonderful. And everyone here, I hope you can continue to contribute to this. So, I'm going to be, uh, let me get my, uh, let's see if I can get my uh, slideshow up right, right now. One second. Ah, wonderful, it worked. Okay, I'm sure all of you know, sure the knows saying all life, all life is yoga. Well, for us, musicians and lovers of sound and the harmony of the spheres, all life is music too, the divine music, the divine mother's radiance. When Shakti was describing hearing the music of the spheres and the stars, I was just nodding my head, yes, yes, it is so much that. So I'm gonna be doing a very different approach. I'm gonna be demonstrating, um, one, just talking about music and talking about how music shapes our consciousness. And I'm going to improvise some music. I'm actually going to improvise on some of Mother's music that she improvised on the organ. Um, Jan's going to come in a while later and read some passages from Life Divine and Savagey, and I'm going to improvise some music to that. But I want to start. One second, let me go to the next slide. Okay. I've taught music, uh, music for dance in college. I've taught music in many different venues. And one of the first things people say is, well, when you're analyzing it, doesn't that take the joy and magic out of it? And I want to tell you a little extraordinary experience I had. Uh, when I was 17, I took a year off from high school. I wanted to go to a conservatory and um, I was studying music. I was playing five hours a day at piano. I was um, composing. And my teacher said, you have to learn music theory. And I said, oh, that's just so boring. Well, I was very, again, by mother's grace, I was very fortunate. An Israeli composer, Nahum Amir, was in New York that year. <clears throat> and I went from my New Jersey home to New York. And the first thing we did, we had, he took these 
two measures, actually really just took one, from a Bach prelude, and we spent one hour on that first measure, one hour. Let me get my piano up here. Oh, that's not it. Let's get another piano. There we go, okay. And I never heard music the same again. So he starts by pointing out, you don't need to read music for this, but he starts by pointing out, Bach has a lower note. If you can feel the sense of grounding, Bach is bringing us into the physical, into the sense of being in the physical. Well, when I started to play, he says, well, we'll play it for me. And I go, I go like this. And he says, stop. And I said, What's wrong? Did I make a mistake? I said, no. The little squiggle, very to be at the left, that's silence. And he said, I didn't hear the silence when you started. Do you know the phrase from Life Divine? There's a phrase where Shubhendra says, those who have felt the calm within can feel the energies arising, manifesting in this entire universe. And Bach is inviting us. These weren't quite. I'm translating what my teacher said into integral yoga language by establishing this foundation in being and beginning with that sense of silence and emerging. you to feel the uprising, the upwelling of the aspiration of the universe for the perfection of the manifestation, all of this in just a few notes. And so we take just that first part of the melody. And when you hear it coming from silence, you can feel as the notes rise, feel the aspiration. strengthen it, he repeats it and brings it higher, we're aspiring higher, and still higher. And later he comes back down, don't need to know that. So I just wanted to share this moment, I don't know if I can convey to you the awesomeness of what he did for me that hour, I, I had never heard Bach. Even all of classical music was transformed for me. So I want to tell you one little more story, very, very quick uh, story to evoke this. Someone said, imagine you're walking through a forest. Maybe it's a path you've been on many times. And suddenly in a clearing, you come across, you know the crystal in the Macha Mandir? Imagine a sphere 10 times the size of that crystal, luminous and radiant, lighting up the whole forest. What would your response be? You'd be in such awe, your mind would stop. And, the, and he says, if we saw things truly, that the very leaves and trees and stones and dirt on the path would carry the same quality. So what I, and the mother also says, many times she says, we take everything for granted. We don't see, we, we need magnificent music, magnificent poetry, but you know what? I'm going to play an example of the mother's music. I transcribed it from the May 1954 improvisation. And mother stays on one or two notes for three minutes. Now to most of us, this is boring. So let me go on. And taking that sense, I'm going to be describing what I'm doing, describing what's happening. But don't hear this with your thinking mind. Don't hear this only with your intellect. Hear this with your soul. Hear this with your spirit. Hear the words arising out of silence. Let me take, let me do the music first. Let me get the right sound here. Okay. So the mother starts, this is before, this is not the meditation yet, but just um, without looking at the words, the mother starts for at least two minutes or three minutes, she's drawing us, drawing the force down. Bored 
her mind. So think, okay, that's enough. Let's, let me hear something more interesting. And she goes on. And she's drawing us in. Finally, about two, three minutes later, it's the same note higher. She's drawing us higher. silence and wait and wait and feel her presence and feel the force and you come back. She begins to, to make it faster. music for the mind of the vital. This is Mother pouring her force, inviting us to let go of any conceivable notion that we can understand this with our mind or vital, or even our surface physical consciousness. She's inviting us into the very depths. if we take that, take that spirit, take that sense of, as Shakti describes so beautifully, allowing the music to emerge from silence. I'm speaking partly to your, your mind is taking this, but taking it in and giving it to the soul, giving it to the, to the spirit. And, and what happens spontaneously when we take some music without any preparation, prior preparation, I'm going to let the words see what they evoke with great simplicity. Now, I'm sure you've all heard Sanskrit prayers chanted, and very often they're just one or two notes, very much like how the mother starts her music. I was a choir director in a, Catholic, a Spanish Catholic church for about 10 years, and I was often asked to take one of the Psalms from the Bible <clears throat> and improvise a little chant for the opening. It was to totally amazing. I never knew it would come out. So this is one of my favorite prayers of the mother. And again, as I said, in how Nahum Amir invited me to hear the silence, how mother is inviting us feel the force and to feel the silence underlying that. We begin with silence. And I'll just read, I'll read to the, the uh, prayer first. Let thy light be in me like a fire that makes all alive. Let thy divine love penetrate me. I aspire for thy reign as sovereign and master of my mind and heart and body. Let them be thy docile instruments and thy faithful servants. And we'll see what mother is inviting, what, what music mother is inviting to come out. <clears throat>
Now, <clears throat> because music covers a very wide range of moods, and we do live, some of us, many of us, uh, at times in the outer consciousness would be surface vital, wanting to connect with the deeper realms. Um, I have occasionally created some kirtans. This is very, very different from the rich, lush, heartful, soulful, beautiful music of Shati, but I thought it would be fun to, to share this. This is a kirtan um, I composed for a group that Jan and I were in over the last year. Um, they were not familiar with Mother and Tree, but no, I thought it'd be nice to take this um, very different spirit. I would love to invite you to join me in the kirtan, but if you sing uh, unmuted, it's going to create chaos. So I'd invite you to mute yourself, but sing along. You can sing along. Generally, when we do it in person, um, I'd be singing the line in yellow, and uh, you would sing along with the line in red. I'll sing them both, and I'll say one more thing, uh, because I am mostly a composer and keyboard player. I always like to tell people, folks, please sing really loud because you don't want to hear me sing. So um, I'll try and make the music keyboard really, music really nice. And if you sing along when you're muted, you won't hear me singing as much, and that will make it more enjoyable. Okay. So it's very simple. This is a mantra given by Sri Bhinnu to a disciple. Open my, I changed the words just slightly to make it fit the rhythms more. Open my mind and my heart and my life to your light and your love and your power. In all things, may I see the divine. In all things, may I see the divine. Now, let me make sure this isn't, we've got some percussion here. Make sure it's not too loud. There we go. Let's try it. All right, there we go. Okay. Um, I'll play the opening melody, melody through once, and then with your Zoom muted, you join along. Silence, thank you, Shakti. <laughs> Very different style here. Um, yeah, Jan's going to come in in a moment. How are we doing for time? Uh, yeah, we'll just do these two. Yeah, I have a, Jan and I have a website, Remember to Be. I'll tell you in just one minute. We don't have time to sing it, unfortunately. But um, there's a 10th century Buddhist sage, Tilopa, and he has the six reminders. Um, let go of the past, let go of the future, let go of the present, don't think, don't analyze, just be. And I took that, I love that, and so we have one of our verses is, let's see if I can do this, oh heck, I'll take 20 seconds for this. Let go, oh, I can't say this. Remember to. 
okay. <laughs> okay, now for a, a quite radical shift in mood. Jan will take the microphone. I think that microphone is uh, has to be switched on. Are you hearing it now? Yes. Okay. I think I need to talk very close to it. Okay. Um, Jan's going to read a short passage from Life Divine, and I'm going to play an oboe sound, just inspired as the words emerge. As the walls of inner separation break down, the inner light gets through. The inner fire burns in the heart. The substance of the nature and the stuff of consciousness refined to a greater subtlety and purity. And the deeper psychic experiences, those which are not solely of an inner mental or inner vital character, become possible in this subtler, purer, finer substance. The soul begins to unveil itself. The psychic personality reaches its full stature. Savitri. Don, Don, it might be nice if you stopped sharing and then we could see you and Jan on the full screen. Okay, sure. And yeah, the voice could be louder and the music a little lower and that would be better. Okay. okay. Yeah, we have um, experimented quite a bit with the uh, much better getting the music over the Zoom is quite a challenge. I've just I've spoken with a number of people who hopefully this will work. Hushed and fulfilled before they could create the glorious dream of their own universal acts. Here was engendered the spiritual breath. Here closed the finite sprawl to the infinite. A thousand roads leaped into eternity. For singing ran to meet God's venerous face. The gnome released him from its limiting chain. He knocked at the doors of the unknown. Thence, gazing with an immeasurable outlook, one with self's inlook into its own pure vast. 
he saw the splendor of the spirit's land, the greatness and wonder of its boundless books, the power and passion leaping from its column, the rapture of its movement and its rest, and its fire-sweet miracle of transcendent life. The million pointing undivided grasp of its vision of one same stupendous all. Its inexhaustible acts in timeless time. A space that is its own infinity. Thank you, Nam. So beautiful. Thank you for your presentation and for your thoughts, and especially that beginning silence, of that which has to be in between notes. It has to be supporting the whole movement forward. If silence is not there at the beginning or in the middle and at the end, there is no music really. It needs to be there, pervading all, holding all in its embrace. So. So wonderful to to have these presentations in a totally different realm of consciousness, you know, of poetry, music, creativity. Uh, thank you for this. So, if somebody has uh, any questions, so please uh, uh, go forward and uh, ask the panelists any questions. I would have a one question straightforward to to Don uh, about the mother's music, which you presented in a very interesting manner, actually, that you ac went deeper into the psychology of uh, the mother's uh, playing, which uh, not many do, you know, especially musicians, they immediately reject because they don't hear the, you know, the, the habitual way of playing music. And uh, I also kind of discovered it in my own way that mother is actually not playing so much music. She's mm -hmm. more consciously, how to say, when she's playing, you could feel the consciousness present in every mm -hmm. bar. Exactly. And that consciousness really comes to you if you want to receive it. And then you can be together with that. You can be aware. Yeah. That's exactly right. The reason that I began with that little story about the Bach prelude, um, you know, I've had the misfortune. I, I felt a calling when I was a teenager, that same year when I was 17, I had this sudden memory. I knew I had worked on something like integral psychology before, and I knew my life involved science and spirituality. And everyone hears this. They hear talk about science or hear a so-called analysis of music, and they go to hear. And so whenever I talk, I try and say, no, you're, you have to listen from here. Or you have to hear, for, can I just say, it? you have to hear from here. So you use words, right? I'm shocked you convey this so beautifully in her presence, in her music. I, I have the misfortune of being a, a teacher who has to use words. So I wanted to convey, always start with the silence and always start from the aspiration. And when I listen to mother's music, I was listening to mother's music and transcribed, I transcribed about four minutes of it. So I'm looking at the score <clears throat> and I'm knowing you do not analyze this or think about this. You feel the force, you feel her presence. And do I dare, I mean, what a absurd, ridiculous, daring thing to do to improvise with mother's music. But I thought, well, this might be an offering. And if I had more time, I probably have spent five or 10 minutes with one or two notes and just say, you know, and just keep saying, don't let your mind take this for granted. Do not let your vital seeking for, for excitement come in, feel the force, feel the, what she, what she is literally doing as you 
you said, with that power. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, I want to thank you all again for, uh, for this beautiful uh, presentations of both and Shakti's music and this prayer for Ukraine is really an amazing piece. It was poetry came to her and she put it into Ukrainian beautiful language. Uh, unfortunately, the translation does not really give you this this depth for the words, um, but still you could get the sense of what it was about, about the peace and harmony and the divine intervention, because we are at the brink of big change. We are moving into the spiritual age, into subjective age, and this transition is quite dangerous for because the old forms of knowledge and habitual way of being are trying to to creep in and to possess our future. They want to drag us down to the past. And we are breaking through to the future, to the dawn. The same crisis is happening all over the world. You can see it in every corner of the world, including Auroville. So we are building a new world. And so music may help in this kind of Vladimir, I just want to address Jessica Manley made a really good point. <clears throat> I think both, I just met Shakti, um, gratefully so, a few days ago, and we're both putting together a full presentation in a half hour each. I actually skipped half my presentation to make sure I'd have more. Uh, Jessica very wisely asked for more silence in between. Yeah, it, it would be great. I'd love to present with you again, Shakti, if we can at some point, we can both kind of work out um, we can create, we can do a sculpture of music and poetry in silence. So thank you, Jessica, for that suggestion. Very, very wise, and we will take it in, into our hearts. Yeah, and I'd, I'd just like to also uh, thank you, Don, and thank you, Shakti, so much. And just to mention to everyone that's on today that Shakti will be sharing more of her sonnets at our 2022 Sri Aurobindo Integral Yoga Retreat that's coming up on June 29th through July 3rd. So we hope you all can join us there. And uh, we're very, very grateful that Shakti's agreed to um, to share her, her passion and her love for Sri Aurobindo's sonnets and, uh, and be at our retreat. So all the best yeah. and we meet again. Namaste. Yes. Thank you. Thank you again, Don. Namaste. Thank you.